My name is Pastor Marlon Curtin. This is the Rockway Cathedral. Uh, welcome, welcome to our Sunday service. Welcome to our Sunday service. If you like what you see here, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Our foundational scripture is Matthew 7, verses 24 and 25. Matthew 7, verses 24 and 25. We at the Rockway Cathedral say we're building God's kingdom in you. Be blessed. It's November 12th, 2023. Welcome to online worship at the Rockaway Cathedral. We are so glad that you have chosen to be with us this morning. Whether you're just having a look or seeking a place to worship, we are delighted to have you here. And though we may not be able to meet together physically, that is not going to stop us from rallying together spiritually. Join us online for a time of worship and a message from Pastor Marlon Curtin. Join us in experiencing the joy of singing to the Lord with the gospel duo, Melody and Harmony.
Bible study is back with the topic pressure, pain, and persecution, the suffering of Christ. Tune in on Tuesdays on Zoom, meeting ID 960-2462-6792 and password 271-927. The annual church meeting has been rescheduled for November 15th, 2023. Please join us at 7.30 p.m. until 8.30 p.m. on Zoom, meeting ID 960-2462-6792 and password 271-927. The 2024 vision. At this meeting, there will be the appointment of deacons and the election of one trustee office. For more information, go to www.therockawaycathedral.com. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, for your mercy. We pray, Lord, for persistence in the body of Christ. Persistence in the body of Christ, persistence in praying, persistence in fasting, persistence in going to church, persistence in Bible study, but most importantly, persistence in prayer. Prayer is our weapon. Prayer is our opportunity to invoke the kingdom of God and the power of God into our lives. Prayer is the opportunity for us to invoke the kingdom of God and the power of God in our lives. I pray, Lord, that we are attached to prayer. I pray, Lord, that we believe in prayer. And I pray, Lord, most importantly, that we pray. Now, not only individually, but collectively. Pray individually and collectively. In Jesus' name, amen. Today's scripture of the day is taken from Luke chapter 18, verses 1 through 8, in the Christian Standard Bible Version. Now he told them a parable on the need for them to pray always and not give up. There was a judge in a certain town who didn't fear God or respect people. And a widow in that town kept coming to him saying, give me justice against my adversary. For a while, he was unwilling. But later he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or respect people, Yet, because this widow keeps pestering me, I will give her justice so that she doesn't wear me out by her persistent coming. Then the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. Will not God grant justice to his elect who cry out to him day and night? Will he delay helping them? I tell you that he will swiftly grant them justice. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Rockaway Cathedral is a nonprofit organization that is seeking to win souls for the Lord in the Far Rockaway community. We especially want to make a difference in the lives of those who are often disenfranchised. However, we need your support to get there. Your act of kindness can be a lifesaver for someone. Remember, richness is not necessary, but willingness is. Please visit our website at www.therockawaycathedral.com. Click on the blue Donate tab at the bottom of the page, then click Make a Donation. We are also asking that you continue to support us by viewing our service once a week. We're now on Cash App. You can send your donations to hashtag Rockaway Cathedral. We thank you for your partnership and continued support. Good morning. Good morning. God bless you. Welcome to the Rockaway Cathedral. So, so we urge you, we urge people to pray. We're going to be talking about spiritual warfare today. We're we'll talking about spiritual warfare. There's a connection between prayer and in spiritual warfare. So we're going to be talking about a prayer today. Next week, we'll, we'll go to a different uh, subject heading into the holidays. Next week, we'll talk about a different subject going into the holidays, but it's important that we pray. It's important that parents pray over their children. It's important that husbands and wives pray for each other. And it's important that churches collectively pray, collectively pray to achieve and to invoke the power of God 
in the life of the church and evoking the power of God in the life of the church. Today's message is called Imposition. Today's message is called Imposition, part of our Spiritual Warfare series. Be blessed. Join us as we welcome the gospel duo Melody and Harmony. I just want to praise you forever, forever, and ever, and ever, and ever, and ever, for all you've done for me. Blessings, blessings, and glory, blessings and glory. Today's message is called Imposition. Today's message is called Imposition, part of our spiritual warfare series. The scripture will be found in Luke chapter 18, verses 1 through 8. 
Luke chapter 18, verses 1 through 8. Going to be reading from the Christian Standard Bible. Please stand for reading God's Holy Word. Luke chapter 18, verses 1 through 8. Uh, today's message is called Imposition, part of our spiritual warfare series. Here we begin the reading of God's holy word. <clears throat> now he told them a parable on a need for them to pray always and not give up. It was a judge in a certain town who didn't fear God or respect people. And the widow in that town kept coming to him saying, Give me justice against my adversary. For a while he was unwilling, but later he said to himself, Even though I don't fear God or respect people, Yet because this widow keeps pestering me, I will give her justice, so that she doesn't wear me out by her persistent coming. Then the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. Will not God grant justice to his elect who cry out to him all day, cry out to him day and night, who delay in helping them? I will tell you that he will swiftly grant them justice. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? So for the scripture. Lord, speak to you, speak to your servant, and bless your people in Jesus' name. Amen. So, uh, of course, you know I love football. This is uh, a little bit touchy for me because this is a team I do not like. I'm a Dallas Cowboy fan, but uh, this uh, this this introduction is really perfect for for, the, for today's message. So. The uh, San Francisco 49ers played the Pittsburgh Steelers on September 10th, 2023. That was the first game of the season, the first game of this season. They won the game 30 to 7. I just want to focus on one play. And the key people in their play include the following people head coach Kyle Shanahan, quarterback Brock Purdy, running back Christian McCaffrey, and wide receiver Brandon Ayuk. The uh, thing about that play is uh, uh, it was a, one of the first plays of the third quarter. Football has four quarters. So it's the beginning of the third quarter, just after halftime. San Francisco was already up in the game. They were winning the game already. I believe they were 20 to 7. Um, and uh, what happened was Christian McCaffrey ended up running uh, for 65 yards. He ran a 65 yard touchdown making the score after the extra point 27 to seven they ended up winning the game 30 to seven that was not much scoring in the fourth quarter um so it was really an amazing play it took a lot of coordination a lot of different things happened but one of the key things that happened was uh as he's running down because you can't do it by yourself you know there's a lot of things that go on the, the quarterback excuse me the uh Head coach calls the play, quarterback runs the play, gives it to the guy, run it back. But he needs blockers. And one of the key blocks in this whole, this big, long run was uh, was Brandon Ayuk. Seeing that Christian McCaffrey needed some help, he went in and he blocked this guy. And took him out. And then that really sprung the thing to make it from maybe a 20-yard run to really a 65-yard run. So that block was very key with the, that block by Brandon Ayuk, the wide receiver, was key to springing the wide receiver open into the open field to get that touchdown. Let's read the scripture again. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Luke chapter 18. It's going to read the last uh, three verses. Then the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. Will not God grant justice to his elect to cry out to him day and night? We delayed helping them. I will tell you that he will swiftly grant them justice. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, we find faith on the earth. Now, three points today. Point one is physicality. Point one is physicality. Football is, uh, as you know, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a very physical game. Um, you know, people, very large men, great shape, very much trained into doing certain things and blocking and catching and throwing and, and uh, preventing people from catching. Very, very, you know, two equally matched in terms of physicality teams, in terms of strategy, right? Physicality, intelligence, awareness, situational awareness, health and fitness. They, they, they all have health and fitness teams, right? They all have doctors, right? They all have uh, people that help them, uh, even emotionally deal with the game 
and they have coaches. Everybody has a coach. But sometimes what happens is sometimes that one team ends up imposing their will on the other team. Sometimes in football, sometimes in football, even in the NFL, that's what we're talking about now, even in the National Football League, sometimes one team imposes their will on the other, which is why it's called physicality, which is why this message is called imposition. But it usually happens at a certain time of the game. So, so when you have a team, it doesn't happen in the first quarter. Nobody, nobody imposes their will on somebody else in the first quarter. Or even the second quarter. It happens in the second half, the third and the fourth quarter. So what happens is if a team gets up, you know, they're up by uh, 10 points or more. They're up by 10 points, they're up by 20 points, they're up by 15 points in the first half. And they don't really take that many risks in the second half. They kind of already have the game in the bag. And what they do is they try to create a situation where they <laughs> diminish the other person's will to fight. Uh, diminish that person's will or capacity to fight back. And what happens is that the best way to do that is to run the ball. Run the ball down their throats, so to speak. You know, you don't want to pass and take a risk. You don't want your quarterback running around, doing all the stuff so he can get hurt. What you do is you line them up. You let your running back run the ball as often as possible. Take up as much time as possible. Let your offensive lineman push them around, push them back, push them back, push them around, push them back. And then let your running back punch it into the end zone. So not only do you have like now from a 10 or 15 to 20 point lead, you add another seven points to that lead. So your 10 point leads become 17 points. 15 point lead becomes 22 points. 20 point lead becomes 27 points. And then when the lead is so big, Right? And, and it's later in the game, and it's getting late in the game. What happens is the winning team starts to impose their will on the other team. They, the other team, at this point, they don't really feel that they could win the game. You know, so, so you know, because football is not a kind of game where you can score a lot of points very quickly. It takes a while to go from one end to the next because you have all these people opposing you. It's a big field. So all these rules and the time and the stop. And so it's, it's not easy to come back from a big deficit. So one of the best ways, one of the things that a team that's winning can do, they're up 15, 10, 20 points in the first half, is to slow down the pace of the game. Stop throwing so much. Give the ball to your running back. Let them run, 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 and score a touchdown, a running touchdown. And what you do is you start to impose your will, impose your will, on the other team so that they don't even feel like they could win anymore. The physicality of the game becomes an issue. So so even though they're evenly matched, they're, you know, strength training and, and, and coaching and all this other stuff, their emotional capacity to fight back will be diminished if you run the ball, running the ball down the throat of the other team and you start to impose your will on the other team. Point two, consistency. And Jesus always often would, would, would give illustrations to, to kind of back up a point. He would come up with something called a parable, an illustration, a point, you know, a story, a hypothetical story about a person or about a couple of people doing certain things in order to make a point. That, that's what the, the Good Samaritan was about. That's a parable, it's a story. He was asked, well, what does it mean to love thy neighbor? He tells the story of the Good Samaritan, and it becomes immediately clear who the neighbor is. The neighbor is obviously the person who was assaulted on the road, who was robbed. He's always talking talk about the, the story of the sower, right? the, so the story of Lazarus. The, so there's all kinds of stories and parables that he gives to make a certain point. So, so he gives this parable about praying about being persistent in praying. He tells the story of a widow. This is in Luke. He tells the story of the widow. And this is not even part of the Beatitudes. This is after the Beatitudes, which talks about the kingdom of God. You know, there's a woman who needs something from a judge. She, need, he needs the judge to, she needs the judge to rule in her favor against the person she's suing, against the person that she wants to sue. 
against the person that has done her some sort of injustice. So, so she doesn't take matters into her own hands because she's a widow. She doesn't have the strength on her own. She doesn't have the resources on her own. She doesn't have the ability to demand anything from her adversary. So she uses the legal process. She uses the legal system and says to this judge, grant me justice against my adversary. And every time after time, the judge says no. The judge says no. The judge ignores her. The judge doesn't listen to her. The judge doesn't give her what she wants. But, but he says at the end, well, I, I'm going to have to give her this thing because she keeps coming to me over and over again, over and over again, asking me the same question asking me the same thing over and over again, asking me to do the same thing. So I am going to do, even though I don't care about people, I don't care about, I don't care about people, have no regard for persons, have no regard for God, but because she is persistent in this, because she's wearing me out, I will grant her what she asks. And then Jesus does the twist and says, you know, do, do you think that, that God will withhold, withhold things Right, that the elect pray for, that the believers, that people who are in the covenant or people who are saved, if if they keep praying, if they're persistent in praying, why why would God withhold something for them? Assuming they're asking for something within His will, of course. So 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 you know these people saved by God, these people baptized, these people in church, and and they're praying earnestly and persistently about something that is God's will for them to have. Why would God withhold them? And he says, then he says, well, well, will, will I find faith in the earth? So, so, so Jesus talks about and encourages people to pray. And not only encourages people to pray, encourages the people to pray things that are in his will, encourages people to pray things in his will. And more importantly, encourages people to be persistent in their prayers. Don't give up. Go, go to God today. Go to God t t tomorrow. Go to God next week. Go to God every day. Be persistent in your prayer. And, and he says, if it's done in faith, if it's persistent, and if it's a person called by God, selected by God, and saved by God, God will answer that prayer. Point three, in position. And that play that, that Christian, I mean, I wish I could show it. It's on YouTube. You can look it up. You can look up that game on YouTube. There are highlights for that game. You'll see it. It's that it's it happened at the beginning of the third quarter. You'll see the play. But everybody has a role to play. The coach, Kyle Shanahan, is uh, considered to be a genius, like really good at drawing up offensive plays. His dad won Super Bowl a couple of times as a coach, Mike Shanahan. He's been in the game for a while, so he calls plays. Brock Purdy is the one that executes the plays. He's the quarterback. Sometimes he throws, sometimes he hands it off, but he has to convey to the, you know, there's a microphone in the quarterback's helmet. So the coach is speaking to the quarterback. The quarterback conveys the play to the, conveys the, the play call to the players, to the guys in the huddle. He calls the play, he executes it. So in this instance, Gave it to the running back. Christian McCaffrey is the running back. Considered to be one of the best all-purpose running backs in the game right now. I like Marshall Fall. And Brandon Ayuk is an up-and-coming superstar wide receiver for the same team. So, so the wide receiver, you know, his role is to catch the ball, right? Quarterback throws it, he catches it. But but when when the guy is running, when the running back has the ball, he's not going to just stand there. It's obviously not a play where he catches it. He's not a play. He's not in the plan of the of the play. He's just there, but he but he can't just sit there and do nothing. So what happens is he tries to help out, and the way he helps out is to block if he can, if he's available. If somebody's there to block, he blocks for the running back so the running back can score. That that's how it is in church. So even as Jesus was talking about prayer in the context of an individual getting an answer to prayer, it's it's not much different than a church, right? So so you have the pastor, you have a bishop, 
You have deacons, you have all sorts of people, with different roles to play. Different people with different roles to play. But the one thing that they all have in common, you know, the pastor's role is to preach and, and get the vision from the church. The deacon's role is to serve and to help see the vision uh, be put into place. The trustee is in charge of the finances to make sure everything's above board. Right? Different people have different roles to play in the church. But one thing that they all do, one thing that they all have in common, when it's not their turn to do this, when it's not their turn to do that, when it's not their turn to preach, when it's not their turn to serve, when it's not their turn to do the financial stuff, they all have one thing they can do, and one thing they can do is pray. So like Brandon Ayuk, it's not his turn to do his thing. It's not his turn to do the thing that he's supposed to do, catch and run the ball. He's supposed to catch and run the ball, but, but when, it's, when somebody else is doing something, he can pray, and, and that's what it is for us. So, 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 so you, member of a church, you affiliate with the church, you, member of the church, you serving in a particular church, you with a particular role to play in a church, you do that thing, and you do it well, you do that thing, and you do well, but there's also something you can do, and that is to pray. You can pray that the will of God, that God be manifest, right, that the will of God, right, the blessings of God, the favor of God be manifest in the church. So, so that the thing that the church is supposed to do, the thing that the mission, the vision that the church will be implemented on the earth today. So, so it's, and it's a matter of praying persistently. You're doing something and you don't see it. Keep praying. You're doing something. And you still don't see it still pray you're doing something you still don't see it keep praying but because when you pray and 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 when when the coach prays and and when the running back prays and and when the linemen pray and when the wide receiver pray when when everybody who's got different things to do when they all pray whether it's together or separately ultimately what you're doing is you're invoking and inviting the presence and the power of God into that situation and just like the old widow, the widow who had no power on her own, the widow who had no ability to get things done on her own, when you invoke the power of the judge, the judge is able to get her what she needed. And when we invoke the power of God into our situation, the power of God into that church, the power of God with the vision of God for that church, you impose, we impose, we impose God's will on the situation. We pull, we pull, we wear down the enemy. The enemy's got this spiritual enemy. The enemy's got that spiritual enemy. And we have this, we have that almost evenly matched. But when we invoke the Father, when we invoke the name of God, when we invoke the power of God, we start to wear down the enemy. And at some point, at some point, the door just opens wide open. The door opens wide open and God and, and, and the Lord starts to move in that situation. People start getting saved. People start getting fed. People start getting educated. People start getting healed. People start getting financial blessings and breakthrough. All things are possible if we pray. All things are possible if we pray with faith in the will of God. The Lord will answer our prayer. In position, we impose, we, by invoking the presence of God into the situation, we impose God's will over the spiritual enemies and adversaries in our life. And they have no choice but to back up, no choice but to back down, no choice but to step aside and let the will of God be manifest in that situation. That's it. Well, you're here today, you're here today, you've never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, you've never accepted him as Lord and Savior. If that's you, pray this prayer after me. Lord, I'm a sinner, please forgive me my sins. I know you came for me, I know you lived for me, I know you died for me, and on the third day you rose again from the dead. Today I confess that you are Lord, and I believe in my heart that you rose from the dead. Therefore today, 
I'm saying. And he's passed the mall and it's the Rockwood Cathedral, building God's kingdom and you go in victory, go in peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for worshiping with us today. We pray that you are blessed by the word brought to us today by Pastor Marlon Curtin. Go in God's grace until we meet again for Sunday service and Tuesdays for Bible study from 7.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Be sure to check out our website for more information about our ministry. God bless you. And remember, you're dismissed from this service, but never dismissed from God's presence.